Pam Hughes and Preston here. Places Let's Go. Today we're at the Stennis Space Center in Hancock County, Mississippi. Mississippi. And, and this is an Apollo lunar module. This lunar module was painted to resemble the Eagle LM5, which was the first manned landing on the moon. And this is a NASA mock-up. It's the correct size and shape has the major features of the real thing, but it's cheaper and stronger than the real ship with no interior. Mock-ups like this were used to practice getting in and out while wearing the spacesuit and the life support backpack for the astronauts. This mock-up was placed on display at Candy Space Center in 1973-ish, probably before the final moon mission. And at some point in the 90s, it was sent to Stennis Space Center. It was, it was across the interstate at the Mississippi Welcome Center. And then it was moved to the Infinity Space Center here in 2018. So there's a wonderful piece of history here. And it's really a fabulous, fabulous stop when you're traveling through Louisiana for your family. Plan on spending an hour or two, depending on how much you're into space. If you're into space, you might spend the whole day here. Uh, it's fabulous. How you like it? Wonderful. Look at that. Isn't that so impressive? Amazing. It is, which is what we're looking at here. Tells the story of and pays tribute to the families who moved their homes to make way for the space age in Mississippi. 2,200 people were moved from their homes and their communities in from Gainesville, Santa Rosa, Napoleon, Logtown, and Westonia. And their names can be found in this book right over here that Preston's looking at. That's all. That moved. Look at that. Trying to find woods. Hold that. Wood. Pretty sure that's my daddy's people. Right there. Yep. And they had to be moved. Check this out. Experience Theater. Oh, wow. Look at that. Wow. And we're right here off of I-10 when you leave Louisiana and you're headed toward Mississippi. Look over to your right and you will see this. Look at this. At the Stennis, whoa, look at that. Saturn V. Look at that. I'm gonna walk you down it. Look at that, that's how they had a moon. If you wanna go to the moon, you first have to go through Hancock County, Mississippi. One of the biggest reasons that the southern region of the United States is so integral in the space program is that we have huge rockets that have to be moved from one site to another, and that's obviously a challenge. And so water transportation became the best option. And the southern landscape, as you know, is etched with an abundance of waterways. Another major factor that pushed the region to the front of a short list of possibilities. Wow. I wanted to share with you the Apollo 4 command module that flew on the first Saturn V launch in 1967. It's on loan from the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum. Check that out. The notes say that it was launched on November 9th, 1967, and was the first flight of the giant Saturn V launch vehicle. It went to an altitude of 11,234 miles and it lasted eight and a half hours. It splashed down in the Pacific Ocean and the first flight qualified the heat shield for lunar flight. This flight qualified the heat shield for lunar flight. Check that out. Wow. Took my breath away. Apollo 4 command module places let's go this is an h1 rocket engine it provides a thrust of 1.6 million pounds a cluster of eight of these powered the saturn s1b rockets first stage this particular rocket engine burns liquid oxygen and propellant rp1 which is a kerosene derivative places let's go mississippi this is an F-1 rocket engine. It has 1,522,000 pounds of thrust. 
It's the most powerful single chamber liquid fuel rocket engine ever built. It was on the Saturn V rocket that launched humans to the moon during the Apollo project. Just wanted to share this with you. Let me get you around the end before I say, hey y'all. And this is a tsunami buoy. It is set out to detect tsunamis. Until 2004, there were six of these in the Pacific Ocean. However, the network has expanded to 39 buoys operating in the Pacific, Atlantic, Caribbean, and the Gulf of Mexico. Wow. Places let's go here at the Dennis Space Center in Mississippi. We are on the elevator, obviously. It's obviously a field trip day. Look at this. Places, let's go. This module, it's America's research lab in space. It's a 28 foot by 14 foot module at the International Space Station. It was there in 2001 and marked a major milestone for humans. Space flight as the primary US research laboratory in space. So let's go inside and see what's in here. Hello, sir. We don't wear shoes on the space station, but you do like to have a fresh pair of socks involved in the Let's go see the space station. Here we go. Wow. Check this out. Began working in 1997 to build Robonaut 1, like the replica display here. Wow, look at that. Robonaut 2 was unveiled in 2010. Wow. Look at Robonaut working. Uh -huh. Talk about science fiction coming to life. Here's a workstation. Fluids. Combustion integrated rack. Wow. Trying to give you time to see everything. A lab freezer. Here is a sleeping station. Wow, looks comfy, huh? Get zipped up in there. There's your socks, pin, everything floats. Remember, you're in space, look at that. Got a mirror, your computer, your bag. Come to this side. They talk about the storage racks in here. The express rack. The converter unit. I wish I knew more of the technology, but I know some of you will be leaving some really good comments. Here's the storage rack. The robotics workstation. There's another one on the other side, directly like this. And then a thermal control system. But now, look up here. Look at this. There's all kinds of stuff up here too. More storage. Look at that. Isn't this? Just wanted to point out to you this nose gear tire that was on the Endeavor during the STS-72 mission that was launched on January 11th, 1996. And the Endeavor touched down at Kennedy Space Center and steered to a stop with this tire on January 20th, 1996. Wow, places let's go. We're at the Stennis Space Center here in Mississippi, and I wanted to point out this main landing gear tire. It flew on Space Shuttle Atlantis during the STS-86 mission from 1997. This tire safely touched down at Kennedy Space Center on October 6, 1997. Look at that. Wow, places let's go. Look at all the tributaries that flowed down here from the Mississippi River. Look at that. Coming down to Louisiana, through New Orleans, into the Gulf of Mexico. Let that soak in. Oh, I made a wave. I didn't even know it started. <laughs> Oopsie. Oh, wow. This is how they study waves. Oh, 
well. Hold on. Here's a long frequency. How this machine works. Now it's doing a long wave. Wow. This photograph here at the Center Space Center is of the flood of 2016 in Baton Rouge. This is O'Neill Lane by Interstate 12. We drive down this road every day now. Look at that. Look at those cars. We're here at Center Space Center in Mississippi and want to share this with you. Whenever there is a flood or natural disaster and they're gone back and the houses are searched, an X is put on the house if it's damaged or not. And so the top quadrant up here shows the date that the house was searched. This is the initials of the search squad. Thank God that's the number of dead bodies found. Zero dead bodies behind this door. And the GL represents a gas leak because the white quadrant indicates hazards such as gas leaks, water leaks, downed wires, infestations, or dead animals. So this is how they leave a sharp message. So anybody riding by knows what took place in the search of this home after a natural disaster or a flood, such as what we've experienced in Louisiana and along the Gulf Coast many, many times through the years. During World War II, weather watchers began to assign names to storms using the phonetic alphabet, Abel, Baker, Charlie. But by 1953, they revised the system to make a different list every year to avoid repetition. They chose women's names after the maritime practice of naming ships and boats. And so, here's how they named the hurricanes. It's so like in 21, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. See, there's a year. Katrina was retired in 20, 2005. If the storm is memorable, the name is never reused and another is selected in its place. Places, let's go. This is a Rolls Royce. Look at that. And here it is, up close and personal. Somebody keeps dropping something over there. Look at that. Wow, that's massive. This lunar sample of a moon rock. This sample was collected by astronaut David Scott in 1971. It weighs three and a third ounces, but it is a fragment of the original, which weighed 10 pounds and eight ounces. This rock is called Brescia, B-R-E-C-C-I-A. It's named after the lunar highlight, highlands region where it came from. Because I know so many of my viewers love to see things that they may not get to personally see so i'll try to get as much of it as i can for you look at that collie thank you thank you to everybody that does all this research and dedicates their lives to learning about this and sharing it with the world 
Space research is so important. Ooh, places let's go. That was quite an adventure. Turn on notifications, subscribe. Welcome to our family. Today is 1,705 consecutive days.